<coughs> Hello, everyone. Um, instead of uh, telling you my specific research, uh, I'm going to share with you uh, my opinion about the interconnected food, energy, water issues in the tropics. Uh, so I believe many of you have heard about FIU, uh, Food, Energy, Water Nexus, uh, because of the NSF grants that almost becomes a buzzword. Okay. Um, so now the main point here is we need to look at food, energy, and the water issues simultaneously. We need to address them in a system, systematic framework. Uh, so I have a list here. Uh, this is not really a complete list of the uh, few issues in the topics, uh, but I'm going to uh, sh share with you some details. Uh, so hopefully we figure out uh, the um, importance of the few issues in the topics. All right. Um, so based on some statistics uh, from 2000 and, and 2010, uh, there were about there, there was about net annual loss of forest area for about 7 million hectares. And uh, 6 million of that is for agriculture. So actually, most of the additional agriculture land in the whole world, in the whole world, uh, came from this area uh, during that period. OK, now because of the agriculture expansion, and also in some regions because of the impact of climate change, uh, irrigation is, is expected to increase considerably. And that will put pressure on both uh, water and energy supply in some of these regions. OK, um, so biofuel, uh, I mean, a lot of studies a lot of studies have already shown biofuel uh, development could be a solution to that region. Um, it could increase the income, and uh, it will not affect the environmental too much. Uh, but based on some other studies, um, uh, biofuel development in the tropics could also be an uh, issue. Uh, so there are some hypothetical studies uh, they, they talk about if the forest land, forest land is converted to savanna, savanna uh, land, and that might cause some regional climate change. So, because we, based on a lot of studies, we find some correspondence between the annual the precipitation and the forest uh, coverage. So, if we reduce the core, uh, forest coverage, and we might end with less rainfall, less precipitation in the region. Uh, so actually, they, uh, one of the last uh, talks uh, touched, also touched about this point. And also based on some estimate, uh, if, we, uh, if we use a, a significant amount of land for biofuel at the expenses of the forest, and then the carbon payback time might be longer, might be quite longer. Okay. Uh, hydropower. Hydropower is a major source of electricity in Brazil. And also, it has a growing potential in many tropical regions. Uh, so but we have a traditional debate about hydropower and fishery. Right? So you can say this, this, this is a map. Um, this, actually, this figure shows the, uh, the presence of fish species and associated with the existing dams, uh, those uh, gray points, existing dams. And also the red point. The red points are represent red points are represent the planned dams. There are a large number of planned dams in each of these countries or regions, and the people worried about that might further affect the fishery habitats. Uh, actually, based on some uh, international research report, uh, they found uh, since 1970s, there is a decline of 70% of total freshwater biodiversity. Okay. So this is uh, based on an uh, international report. OK, uh, so we usually believe, especially engineers, hydropower engineers like myself, okay, we believe hydropower it should be a clean energy in terms of GHG emissions. Uh, but recent studies are also uh, have brought up some different voice. Um, 
So when we build a dam, when we build a dam, the water extends to the upstream, and then that could cause some shallow water, right? Sh some shallow water, and that could cause some in in inundated upstream vegetation, and and, and those things might increase the uh, the decomposition in the reservoir and and cause the increase of the GHG emissions. Um, so uh, as you can see here, this, so this this figure just shows this figure shows an upstream shallow water trace, the trace type. You might have this kind of impression, right? Uh, and also this one shows the concentration of methane, the methane concentration. So with the uh, that actually the concentration changes with the depth of the water. So with the shallow water, the concentration is relatively low. That means the release of the methane from the water is higher in the shallow water. Um, so the, the the charcoal is is actually is a key uh, source of energy in rural areas of many uh, tropical countries. So based on some studies, uh, some st uh, studies they found uh, charcoal production contributes about 7% of total forest cover loss in tropical countries. That's quite significant. And there are also some estimation of, of particular numbers. Okay. I will just ignore that. Um, so uh, actually one of the last studies talk about hydrology, the impact of land use, uh, land use for uh, uh, agriculture or, or, or uh, energy production, and uh, that could uh, generate potential effects on, on tropical hydrology. And the change in tropical hydrology uh, could also affect the weather or climate in other regions. So actually, this figure shows the real kind of correlation between the declining of the forest coverage and the temperature increase in other regions. All right, this is a paper published in Nature of Science. Okay, so all these cases, all these cases, they some way encourage us to think about different things on um, food, water, energy in a consistent systematic framework. Uh, and this is what we, we, uh, we have on the field uh, nexus. Um, so to me, I, I sometimes we often ask, when we write proposals, we often ask us, what does nexus really mean? So I, I put that into three uh, uh, items. The first, they really mean resources to each other. So we have input-output relationship between water, food, and energy. Okay, and they also means collected processes. So especially if we if we understand food broadly as agriculture, there are a lot of fundamental physical processes are collected. Okay, from these three areas. And of course, they also mean some overlay institutions and markets. And those three things also encourage us, people from different areas, to work together to address such issues. Okay? Uh, so next is usually when we look at this things from a systems framework, we have to deal with the trade-off among different stakeholders, different uh, uh, sectors. And we also need to, we might take advantage of some synergies uh, for win-win solutions. Okay? Uh, so, for example, we are talking about to uh, produce second generation of biofuel crops for both energy and also for water quality improvement. Okay. Uh, and of course, we uh, in this provides a framework, a framework, a flexible framework for us to lock in for to lock for uh, joint solutions for the core benefits. Okay. Uh, so, for economists, when what does what does the field mean? Uh, so I add energy at the end. I think for a lot of water economists, uh, this uh, water, food, energy, environment, and access really mean water faith. So ju just a joke. Okay. Um, all right, so I mean water economists. <laughs> so, so actually, there were really a lot of research opportunities. Uh, so I found this figure. Actually, we found this figure from a, a, a journal paper. And it finds, and this shows the number of Precipitation observation, precipitation stations, okay, precipitation stations, in tropical areas and uh, temperate areas. So you can find the number of rain, rainfall gauge stations in tropical areas uh, is generally much lower over time. Okay, and uh, and then um, so I just I, I listed this 
potential research uh, research opportunities. Uh, first of all, we have really have to understand some fundamental Earth systems processes, the collective processes, because only that kind of un understanding could end the way it's a uh, solid uh, collective system. And of course, technology uh, and system design, uh, especially for engineers, play a, a, a big role. And we also have some opportunities for policy reforms, for systems analysis, uh, for monitoring, and of course for interdisciplinary studies, international collaborations. Okay, let me just go a little uh, details about uh, in, in terms of the fundamental processes. So I believe a lot of studies, a lot of people, they believe the Earth systems processes in the tropical regions are characterized by greater magnitude, inter, greater interannual variability, and the greater spatial regions uh, than those generally found elsewhere. Uh, so a lot of uh, several pub publications address that. Uh, so for field, uh, field nexus, uh, we really have, we, we might have some knowledge gap in terms of the land use pattern Okay, land use pattern, and then how, what kind of flow region or water chemistry region, uh, nutrient dynamics might end with a particular land use pattern. And uh, then how would that change in flow region, uh, chemistry region, affect the fishery habitats and biodiversity? So I believe we have a lot of fundamental issues here. And then uh, in terms of the systems shift, uh, we really want, because we, Sometimes we might have to address land use change. Then what are the thresholds for the land and water uses? And then we also need to think about climate change, of course. There are uh, many studies address that. For technologies, um, there are a lot of opportunities because we, we believe uh, for ha to harness uh, renewable energy sources because we believe in tropical areas we have very rich uh, solar energy and wind energy uh, so, for example, here we think about to use solar energy for groundwater pumping, and uh, and this one shows the, the potential of wind uh, wind energies in tropical areas, and we uh, the tropical areas uh, produces a lot of fresh fruit, and uh, the storage of the fresh fruit is very important issue. Sometimes it fails because because of the energy shortage. So, how could we use this? Uh, energy for to, to enhance the food uh, to prevent the food harvest loss and we might in some regions there there are also some potential to use uh, renewable energy for desalination and uh, and also hydrologists uh, I mean uh, like uh, hydropower engineers right now they are where they are studying some environmental enhanced turbines uh, which means the fish might be able to go through the turbine I mean I hope that will come true in the future uh, so for the policies, we really, we uh, just very briefly, we need to balance the economic interest and the ecological su sustainability. We also, when we deal with different things together, we particularly want to pay attention on the social equity, especially for the uh, underrepresented groups. And uh, the, because the, it looks like the, this area is a food basket for the future, for, for the future work. So the, the role of international food market and prices will play a big role. And finally, we have to pay attention on the local context and priorities. For example, in the tropical African countries, the food security is really the focus. And in, in South African countries, the zero uh, deforestation is, uh, is a purpose. So the, my message would be to shift from individual food, energy, and, uh, or water-centric attempts, uh, attempts to the coordination of food, energy, and water goals can make the tropics more sustainable. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so actually, we have the uh, sustainable development development goals, right? SDGs. So the SDGs are specified for different regions, like uh, African tropical regions. Uh, as I said, food security is an issue, it's a major issue over there in, in Southern uh, American tropical countries. The deforestation is a major issue. I believe there are already some uh, institutions uh, under development, our policies under development, our infrastructures under development. So, uh, so, so then um, I, I, I believe, I mean, when we, look, when we approach to the uh, sustainable development goals, 
uh, we really, uh, hopefully, we could take advantage of the field nexus.